Hey everyone, it's Anna. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. I had some questions about the uh, process I used to create my scrappy cards uh, in the last video that I shared. So I have one more uh, stamped and colored image here that I want to make a card with. Um, and so I thought I would just record the whole process of me making this card from start to finish. So I've got uh, a stamped and colored image. This is one of my new Whippersnapper Designs images. And I'm making cards to send off to um, Creative Pals, the store in Brookfield, Wisconsin that displays um, the the uh, cards that I make. So I'm making a card with her. I have a piece of inexpensive uh, white cardstock. This is cut to four inches by five and a quarter. And you can um, either use that size or if you like to have you know, um, the primary focal point of your card to be like, for example, three and three quarters by five, you could start with that size. You just want it to be um, basically um, the size of your uh, patterned paper area on your card. So I'm going to start with four by five and a quarter. And then I have a mat cut as well, which is cut to four and an eighth by five and three eighths. So it's just going to be a mat to this uh, layer here. Okay. And then I have a cardstock um, base. Uh, so this is the color that I've chosen and I've scored it here in the center. So when I fold it, it'll be an A2 size card. And then I have chosen some pattern paper. Now, my previous videos, I talked about using scraps from your scrap bin, um, which would be like these, for example. Um, I keep this patriotic paper um, all together in one kit. So when I cut scraps, I just put it right back in this little bag. Um, so I actually have some scraps in here that I'm going to use for this card. So this paper pad is kind of falling apart on me. So I keep it in this little um, stamp um, storage sleeve that I've cut down to, um, let's see, six and a half, and it is uh, like six and three quarters inches wide. So they work really well for these um, paper pads that like to fall apart on you. <laughs> so I've got some scraps here. Um, so I'll just pull these out. Let's see, I only need one of those and a couple of those and these. So um, I'll just pull these out and I'll reserve these then for another project in the future. So see, I still have even more scraps that I can utilize. But this is a really fun paper pad. Um, if you are looking for something that's uh, a little on the patriotic theme, I really like this paper pad. I like the vintage colors of it and the designs and um, the imagery is really nice. So go ahead and set that off to the side. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add adhesive um, to my panel here. And I'm just using this um, Tombow uh, Mono adhesive. It's a permanent one. And I just, I found a whole bunch of these refills in my storage closet this week. And um, they're not the stickiest of adhesives, um, but it'll do the job for this. So you just want to add adhesive here to your panel. And if you're going to be using, um, uh, like a wet adhesive, like the Tombow Mono Multi Glue, you would want to add that, you know, when you go to stick your paper down, you don't want to add it and then let it sit. So the only reason I'm adding adhesive now is because it's a tape runner. So then I want to decide um, where I want my um, scrappy pieces of paper to go. So I do really love this large piece here. Um, I need to decide if I want to want my design to go um, horizontal or vertical. And I think because my image is taller than it is wide, I'm going to go with the horse or with the uh, vertical design. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this down upside down and I'm going to take my adhesive and that way I can get a really good visual of where the edges of my um, cardstock are. And if you don't want to be quite so precise, um, you can overlap this piece completely, um, which I'll, I'll show you how to do, because you can trim this down later. So stick that down nice and good. Then I have this piece as well. I really like the stripes. Um, I'm gonna use the stars, since those are both kind of busy patterns. I think I'm gonna use the stars. Yeah. Um, so I'll put this one down here and see how um, 
see how my piece of paper here is going to overlap this one here um, by quite a bit and I don't have any adhesive here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to add adhesive to this side so now this piece of paper can stick to this piece of paper without any problems and I'll go ahead and overlap it a little bit uh, to my white piece here so you can see what that looks like so I'll just adhere this down and just following the edge of my white cardstock there and then give that a good press. All right, so that's a good start. Now you can see I have overhang here, but not to worry, that will all get trimmed off. So I'm gonna keep working with my design here. Um, oh yes, I like these stars. So I think, um, I think I'll use the stars. Yeah, I think I'll use the stars as kind of a um, dividing piece between these two pieces of paper. So because I have no more adhesive here, I need to add adhesive to the back side of this piece. So just give that a couple little um, drags of the adhesive. And now I'm going to adhere this down and I want to try and make it as straight as I can, but I'm not going to worry if it's not too straight. And I want to overlap those two pieces um, just so this piece of um, star paper is not strict, uh, strictly down the center of my card, but off to the side a little bit. And you just get to play around with the design that you like. And then stick that down. Now I've got a couple pieces left over that I can use to decorate the inside or the back of my card or I can put them right back into my scrap bin. So now what I'm gonna do is I am going to actually just use um, a straight edge to cut this. You could take it over to your paper cutter and trim it as well. I'm just gonna use my straight edge here. Actually, I think I'm gonna run over to my paper trimmer. I've got a piece here that's overhanging really, really slightly, and my paper trimmer will do a better job of cutting that off. So I'll be right back. All right, so now I've trimmed off that excess paper and I was able to follow right along the edge of my four by five and a quarter inch cardstock. And so uh, everything is trimmed in really nicely. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some faux stitching using my tracing wheel. Just give that a little zip there. And there, and there. And out here on this edge here and then finally I'm gonna actually turn it and give it a little roll on each of these ends and now I notice that my cardstock here is picking up so I'm gonna pop just a little bit of white uh, liquid glue underneath there and give that a pinch down now that will be nice and secure I better check this side too. That one's nice. All right, so there we have uh, the start of card base. I'm going to go ahead and adhere this to uh, my matte layer, which is a nice charcoal gray. And I'm gonna use liquid adhesive to do that. And I like to pick it up when I do this so I can really see the edges nicely. Get it nice and centered. There we go. All right. So now we have that piece. Now I can add some faux stitching to my um, little uh, colored panel here. So just a real quick zip up the sides. And I could have die cut this with a um, a die that has stitching on it, 
um, but sometimes when I'm just making quick cards like this, I just find that the um, tracing wheel is a faster way of adding um, details to the stamped, uh, stamped image. So now I'm gonna go ahead and adhere her in place. And you can get creative with your layout too. I just kind of kind of like to keep things simple. Um, okay. And then I have some extra pieces here, which are gonna be more than enough to decorate the inside or back. So I think what I'm gonna do is add a little piece um, out here, just to give this uh, card base a little bit more interest. So I'm going to actually adhere this down. Right there. Make sure it's nice and straight. Now I can actually, oops, I got glue on my mat, flip this over and give this a quick snip here. And adhere this piece in place as well. And now I like to make sure that when I do something on a layer, I do the same thing on all the layers. So I'm going to give this a quick uh, bit of faux stitching too, just like that. And I think I have, um, yeah, I have some stars here. So I'm going to add, um, instead of a button, I think I'll add a star. So let's see. See, I have another tray full of stuff here. <laughs> little hearts from Joanne. These are little die cuts from Gabby. <laughs> little ribbon ends. So I just need to decide um, what star I like. I kind of like that silver one, the smaller one. I think I'll use that. And these are not self-adhesive, um, so I need to add some adhesive to my card before sticking this down. So I'm going to use some hot glue, excuse me, hot glue. Just a little dabble do ya. And then I'll drop that star right in place there and give it a quick little press. There we go. Cute. So now she's ready to be added to a card. So I'm going to go ahead and fold my card stock. And I'm going to use my Teflon bone folder to give this card a nice good um, crease. I'm going to add some white adhesive here to my card. And adhere it down. So hopefully that helps you see how I use that white piece of cardstock as kind of a backing to my scrappy pieces of paper. And isn't she cute as can be? Ah, I just love her. So now I can actually use um, these papers here to decorate the front, um, or the, excuse me, the inside or the back. I think I'm gonna add a white panel in here when I go ahead and send the card. So I'm gonna leave the inside just plain as it is. But since I have these extra strips here, I might as well add them to the back. I could add this one here, or I could add this one here. I think I like the blue, so I'm gonna add this um, here. just like that. And then I can always trim off the excess as well. So I don't have to start with it perfectly the right size. I can always make it the right size. Oops, as long as I stick it down in the right spot. <laughs> and go this way. go. 
Now I have two ends I need to trim off here. So with just a quick snip of my scissors, it makes that process really easy. And then I want to make sure that I add my faux stitching to this side as well. And then along the edges too. And then I'll be able to add my um, hand stamped by Anna or handmade by Anna stamp add a sentiment panel on the inside and send this off to a crafty friend. So let me go ahead and show you a couple of the other cards I made using the same process. You haven't seen these ones yet. So here's one I made with another one of the new Whippersnapper images. In fact, all of the ones I'm going to show you now are made with my new Whippersnapper images because I'm going to be sending these off to Creative Pals where they'll display them uh, in the store where they sell the stamps. So I use the uh, scrappy paper piecing technique on all of these cards. And here's another one featuring Lady Cluck. <laughs> and these were just um, scraps that I had in my scrap bin. And I was able to make all of these cards. And to be honest, I didn't even make a dent in my scrap bin. I love this piece of paper here. It had this top piece. Um, you know how uh, pattern paper will have that extra piece at the top that shows, you know, the next page in the the pad or it'll be like the what's on the back side it has like that extra half inch strip at the top well this one had this cute little cute banner and so I kind of incorporated it into the card <laughs> I thought that was rather cute <laughs> um, and then there's this card as well I added lots of faux stitching to this one and then the last one I have to share with you is this one here so cute images. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this is helpful and um, encourage you to dig out your scraps this weekend and uh, see about putting some cards together. So thanks so much for watching. I'll be on later to share some more in inspiration with you and um, hope you have a wonderful evening. Thanks for watching. Bye!